What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the shop and welcome to the first ever Duca Heritage live stream. So, crack yourselves a beer. Pour yourselves a glass of wine. Let's hang out for a little while. Um, I guess first things first, uh, we got good video and audio, stuff like that. I hear you. I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are hearing what we're saying. There's Brad, rated R. All oh, good, all oh, good. All right, so um, let's get into it. I mean, um, this is more or less, we were planning on doing a, uh, a Q&A uh, video, but I would much rather just uh, sit and hang out with you guys, take questions, we can chat. We do have a list of uh, a lot of the questions that we get in the comments. But, you know, let's just hang out and have a nice Saturday night. I can't stop looking at myself and my eyes are over here. Yeah, I apologize. We're a little clunky with the live stuff. We've never done it. So it's pretty much just like everything else we've done uh, while getting this channel started. Um, we spent our last pennies building a, a PC so that we could crunch video. We spent our last pennies building a website so we could start getting pieces out to you guys. Um, so, yeah, if you guys got questions or whatever. We're just going to be going back and forth with the chat and just doing what we do. We got Axe Wood Paste in the house. We got Exotic here. We got Chick and Tater. Hi, Andre. Hi, Cedric. Yeah, we got the boys in the chat. We miss and love you. So what's on your guys' minds? <laughs> What's going on, Dutch? Hodgepodge, I like your beaver. I really like your beaver. Oh, yeah, so for you guys that watch Hodgepodge stuff, he actually gave my lovely wife here uh, a, a complimentary uh, <laughs> voiceover to his intros now. So she's a part of that channel. That's a pretty cool thing that we got going on there. <laughs> open new doors how did we decide to start the channel all right yeah i guess that's as good a place as any to start um well how far back do we go uh well with the birth of our daughter and then the introduction of uh a covid lockdown shortly thereafter um before all of this COVID stuff happened, I ran and managed uh, a pool company. We built in-ground concrete pools. Nothing like marrying a pool boy. Uh, I don't know. We had like 150 regular service client base. We were doing... I don't know, five or six new construction jobs a year. Uh, and we were we were doing some pretty high end stuff, um, pretty much like eighty to two hundred fifty thousand dollar projects. And then came the COVID lockdown. Uh, we had a brand new baby girl in the house, and Dad had to figure out how to make our life continue working. Um, I had been doing wood turning just as uh, as a hobby um, for therapy. And it's all because of her. That's for about a year prior to Aurora. So I had to get busy thinking about what, what can we do? And so we just got busy doing it. And like I said earlier, I, we spent all of our pennies on getting a PC that was able to do uh, just the, the crunching, the rendering of the video stuff, and then, again, get it all over again, um, getting the website up, and, and just try to get busy. Um, I'm spending a lot of time on this one question, so you're going to have to keep an eye on the chat so that we can move on to 
what's going on. But yeah, that's pretty much just what we're doing. Um, it's kind of just how I work. It's the whole adapt and overcome thing and doing my best to keep us going. He started the channel because I pressured him to play with wood. See, the problem is, babe, is you're looking at the I monitor told you, and I not the camera. Because I want to see us. <laughs> We're beautiful. Oh, yeah. The boss is always around. What's your favorite piece so far? Andre, best question ever. That's mm. a tough one. Um, I don't know. I think... The Ugly Stick Vase was probably one of my favorites. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's really weird because I honestly, I get attached to every piece because it's a process from beginning to end. And I have to, I have to do my best to see it in my head before I even start the process. Um, she, one, will she starts throwing ideas at me and I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm trying to think this one thing through and uh, I have to go and reset and uh, yeah I don't know I just have to see it and then we just try and make what I see and then it never and then it never actually goes that way just, just up over there or upstairs oh it's upstairs I'll go grab it he wants them to see his cup all right yeah sure my favorite piece because my opinion is important here is the red cedar vase and I'm actually not disappointed that it's still up for sale in the shop because that means it's still on my shelf at home What's going on, Richard? Uh, uh, Lewis, um, the branding iron, that actually came from, uh, uh, as ironically as it sounds, uh, brandingirons.com. And uh, my wife went and was the one that uh, picked up that brand that was actually a gift. Um, the design on the brand, she actually drew by hand. And then they were able to convert that into a vector file and machine that out for us. Uh, she had nothing but good things to say about them uh, in that creation process. So, yeah, I do uh, recommend them. Uh, what else have we got here? Hey, Jess, what's going on? Irreverent Brewers Network. I do a bit of brewing uh, on my own. That's how I turned into a beer snob. We have uh, Devil's Backbone Juicy IPA. I'm a fan. Um, what do you got going on, Irreverent? Uh, you start your own channel, or are you just getting into doing the uh, the work, or what you what you got going on, brother? How do I not smash all of my wood turning tools and sell what's left after a piece I spent days on exploded and flies across the shop? Oh, man. Hey, listen, brother, it's just part of the process, and it, it happens to us all. And uh, it's kind of ironic that you say that because uh, poor Cedric, our son was down here in the shop and he was turning a piece of birch and he was doing an amazing job. Uh, I went upstairs to check on something. I forget what it was. And uh, before I knew it, he came storming in with the door slamming behind him. And I went down to view some of the same kind of carnage. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> <That's stupid. laughs> uh, but Ah, oh, said you do great work. So this is a, actually a cup that he turned by himself. I don't know if you can tell how thin these walls are, but it's just a beautiful piece. It's literally the first thing he ever turned. Gorgeous. Come on, man, you're doing great. Tell it up. <clears throat> Cleanest branding. All right, yeah, check out, check them out, uh, brandingirons.com. Um, Maybe I'm brewing. Do we have a pen? I'll write that down. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Pink resin. Yes, who said that? Jess, of course Jess says. What's going on, Chris? My girl. 
What's going on, Glenn? Thanks for stopping by. What resin do you use? I use art resin. And this is after quite a few uh, different attempts with other resins. Um, the Illumilite stuff, as a lot of you guys already know, is very, very sensitive to moisture. And that being one of the biggest problems that comes along with wood turning is making sure that your piece is dry enough. And especially when you're adding resin, I got, I've gotten a lot of questions about how did you stabilize that piece before adding resin? Um, the art resin stuff is very, very tolerant with moisture content. Um, it casts great. I've done four inch thick castings and not had problems. Um, it's great for coating, but obviously it's self leveling. That's There's why like we use the rotisserie. So, yeah, uh, art resin. <laughs> They're really awesome, also. Um, it's definitely not the cheapest stuff, but it works great. They do a live on YouTube every Wednesday at one. Do we run our own website? Yes, yes, we do. It. What's up, Johnny Crosby? My <laughs> homie. Steven, I'm glad you like our style. Who's your favorite turner? <laughs> Other than Rated R. Who is my favorite turner? Oh, that's a tough one. Brad's going to be pissed off if I don't say him, but he's got some work ahead of him. Um, not to take anything away from him. He does great stuff. Um, Honestly, he just, just like him. He just needs a little more confidence. He needs to just get after it and not be afraid if something explodes on the wall because it happens. Um, I don't know. That's really a tough one. Um, so the whole reason that any of this started. You like Gal the best. Gal's great. I love his stuff. Um, the, so it's a great time to uh, pick this up. Um, I, I should actually. Uh, it's, it's what is it? Gal G A O, woodworking. I think. E well, I just don't want to say his channel wrong because yeah, yeah. I know it's. Oh, that's a good question, Hodgepodge. Pretty much anyone other than Laguna because they're assholes, or Jet because it's falling apart. It's Gal Wood Lab. Check him out. Um, he makes loads of content. <laughs> amazing pieces and he's been after it for a while he he puts out a couple videos a week and he makes some really great stuff um so yeah check him out gal wood lab um i've been after him to get a sticker but i don't think that he is in the states um but outside of that i was gonna get a little further into like why we even started wood turning and it's all because of her uh, she would just watch me watching other people do it on youtube and watch my face while i was watching people make beautiful things and then one day some guy just showed up with a truck with a bunch of used equipment and then there we went and i just started <laughs> playing with it but um who i was watching then i, w I was honestly i was watching a lot of nick zametti then um he was doing some interesting stuff um, I don't know. I I would probably have to say pole barn. I probably have to say uh, dug over at pole barn just because he reminded me a lot of myself and just getting in his shop and getting stuff done and making cool stuff. I would, yeah, I'd probably have to stick with that. What uh, what laser are you thinking that you'd replace this hunger with? Oh man, the new recon is probably where my target is at. The uh, the sliding bed, um, it's got a huge over center distance. You can go tiny to massive. And trust me, I have some massive pieces that I've been saving up for doing some big projects when we have 
a, uh, a hardier lathe to get after it. But I really do like the, the new recon. It's, uh, it's built to be compact, but the, the whole entire bed slides out on a motorized whole tram. I don't know. We're going to write to them um, and try and put some cash together if they don't want to sponsor us to see if they can give us a deal or something. I don't know. Anything. Thanks for coming by, Dutch. Hey, what's going on, Dutch? He's going to bed. Oh, you're yeah, going to bed. I open. Awesome. Yes, yes, I've watched a lot of Humphrey stuff. He's a great guy. Semper Fi to him. Um, oh, yeah, I like him. Uh, yeah, as far as technique and style, I love his stuff. Um, I don't know. I've got a chicken tater shirt. Andre, someone else is in here. Chicken your taters! Chicken tater shirt. It's, it's pretty incredible how that turned into a thing. What's up, Don? That makes me happy for me. Oh, so I Dominic. did. I did see there was a, a question about the the slow turner. Okay, so Hodge, the reason why we haven't gotten the shirt colors yet, so um, I created that hunk of wood on the back. It actually says the Duke of Heritage. The whole logo came from just a wood doodle I did, and I sent it over to Branding Irons in a picture. They were able to turn it into like a digitized form. Vector. That. But I'm having a really tough time getting rid of the background. <laughs> so every time that we actually cut the background out, it's still leaving white lining around each letter. So we don't have colors yet, because when I put it on a white shirt, you can't tell. Yeah, I've been a professional grunt most of my life, just working up into specializing in grunt work and haven't really spent a whole lot of time in doing the graphic design stuff or the website stuff. So I get it if I'm a little crude at some of that and just learning as we go. It's been, it's literally been the whole process, just learning as we go and uh, just trying to do the best we can and make the best of it. Yeah, we're, uh... I was looking at the Laguna 2436 as well. We wrote to them. They told us to piss off and. And now Shannon doesn't like them and. <laughs> 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 yeah, but this same applies for the stickers, Williamson. So but, we'll get there. Yeah, Glenn, I do agree that um, that Laguna Glade does look uh, good and hardy. Um, it's probably a good bet. Inkscape. Inkscape. No. I don't even know that I heard of that. Is that what? Um, is that the stuff that uh, Kim's been doing? No, probably not. He's talking about something. Oh, he's convert our image. Oh, uh, all right. I, I just know uh, Kim's been doing a lot of uh, coding on the exterior of her work. Richard Harris is asking where chicken taters came from. Uh, uh, chicken taters came from when our our boys were here with us for the summer, and uh, Andre uh, stuck his head. He, he just wanted to say something. He wanted to be a part of the video, and he wanted to say something to you guys. So he went and uh, stuck his head under the camera, and what came out was... What's going on, chicken taters? What video was that? I forget. Uh, I don't know. They're all one big blur anymore. Everything's just been a big blur. Um, so, yeah, I kind of want to touch on that just a little bit. Um, Oh, for the logo, if you help. I appreciate that, Rated R. Oh. Probably going to take you up on that, actually, because I'm struggling. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Um, I think I need a little help, too, with the uh, thumbnails. I know our thumbs sometimes are me at best. But uh, it, it's a matter of time. And uh, cranking out the work has been... Uh, that a was lot the of beginning work. of the speed turning video. Thanks, Chris. Love that man. Andre must have done that in the beginning of the speed challenge, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, I'd believe him if he said it. Mm 
We're reading. <laughs> the well, silence is us reading. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, right one thing I did want to touch on is just a little personal note to, to you guys um, just for being here because uh, you guys are obviously keeping up with what we're doing. And um, we're kind of marking the the sixth month of the channel launch uh, right here and now. And yes, I, I'm taking a little bit of a break. And in having that break, it's actually allowed me to step away from everything that's been happening and take a look at uh, what's actually been going down. And um, so moving forward with these projects, uh, I... It might not be able to guarantee that they're going to be absolutely weekly. I think I need to take a little bit more time, uh, especially on some of the, the larger projects. I found myself really just grinding hard and grinding myself down into the dirt in doing so. And uh, we're just going to try and find a balance here moving forward. Um, it was a big uh, curve for me. I had no idea that the channel would grow so fast. All your comments are so amazing. And I never really had to deal with trolls before. There was a lot of guys that had been turning for years and years and years and they're stuck on their techniques and they're analyzing my work and my techniques and all that crap just started getting into my head and I, I needed a little bit of time to just kind of blow all that out and realize that it's just a bunch of shit and I need to just keep doing what I'm doing and just, just stick to who I am and what I do. And I know you guys will be there. So <clears throat> not to mention a video a week with what he's doing is a bitch for us at home, honestly. Because I'll get done work at 4.30. We switch off with our daughter. He goes to work. He's working until the ass hours of the night. We have to wake up early again for me to get to work. It's just somewhere in there we need time to actually maybe eat a meal together. You know, laugh with our daughter together. For him to sleep, eat, shower. Yeah, it's been, it's been <laughs> six months of 16s. 16 hour days. <laughs> Hodgepodge named his beaver Harry. I'm done with him. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <With you. laughs> How did we get rolling on all the subscribers? Ah. Oh, wow. We I don't know. We just kind of put it out there, brother. How come um, you don't wear a face shield? That's it. All right. So we'll, dealing with PPE. Um, I have been beating the crap out of my body since I was able to do so. Meaning since I entered the workforce, um, I've been doing hard work, uh, using my hands, using power equipment, stuff like that. Um, I, I understand the, the overarching be prepared for everything. But at the same time, I am a very tactile person. I, I need to be able to feel the tools, feel the piece. Uh, if ever I feel like I need a piece of PPE, I will use it. But... Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of rely on my knowledge base of doing and how things are going to react, when they're going to react. It, you know, I, I take safety as a personal responsibility. And if I screw up and I get hurt, I take full responsibility for that. Um, I'm, I'm always behind a pair of safety squints. If I'm not chucking a bunch of dust, I really don't want to wrap my face in a mask and a shield and all that crap. Uh, I'm just being honest with you guys. Um, I know there's a lot of guys that have uh, succumbed to all the safety commentary 
and they wrap themselves in all but a suit of armor, and it's just kind of not who I am. All right, keep me on task. I'm if, trying. If I'm rambling. What's a rambler? <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> you make Flint nervous when the music stops. And all I thought about is when they do that song, like the beat. Why is that, Clint? Let's talk about those Crocs. Those are Sanooks. Yes, those are Sanooks. Thank you. I I don't think I would ever wear plastic on my feet. Um, they're basically just real light summer shoes. They're super comfortable. And now that it's getting cold again, I will be living in boots and. When I met him, he was boots all year. It'd be August, and he had tall socks and boots on. And then we talked him down to something. Well, yeah, that's when I was still still doing pool work, and every part of me would be as tan as a piece of black walnut, and my feet would glow in the dark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's one thing you'd want for your shop? One thing I want for shop. Shit. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've been putting off building. Um, I got to put together a dust collection system. I have all of the parts. I just need the time to put it together. Um, obviously, we're going to need a new lathe, especially because I want to be doing some heavier, uh, much larger uh, projects. Other than that, I think the thing that I need, especially just for the video stuff, is better lighting. I have to focus more on lighting. Um, the the light that I have is a, a high intensity discharge light. So if I actually put that directly on the piece while I'm filming, um, although I can see it amazingly with my eye, it looks like it's irradiated. It, it just blasts out the camera with light. So I have to actually offshoot it a little bit. I think that's a wave. It could also be a stop, or he could be raising his hand. I'm not sure what you're doing there, Stephen, with the with the red stop sign hand. Did you ever get the HF broken handle? Just turn chisel to cut ribbon. Oh, where's that bad boy at that you made? The broken breaker bar. Oh, uh, um. I have pondered doing a little further work with that, but the uh, steel definitely needs to be hardened. Um, that's another thing that I've wanted to build for a while is the uh, the blast furnace so I can do some uh, heating uh, for hardening. Um, it works well on softwoods, just doesn't hold an edge very well. What's going on, Joel, in Wisconsin? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure there, Steve, and I wasn't sure if you were telling us to it's hold up. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> oh Lord, don't get us doing hammer time. So a lot of people are asking about your slow turning resin device. A little rotisserie thing. Do you All have right. anything to say about that? I do have something to say about that, and I don't have a problem showing you guys the uh, the little rig that I built. But I have, um, in the last couple of days, actually did a bit of research uh, with manufacturers and some fabrication companies that might be able to put some of these rigs together so that we might be able to have them uh, for sale for you guys if that is something that you're interested in. So if I see a uh, enough interest in that, I will definitely go ahead and get some of those made up and see if we can get a little product line uh, for that. I knew the question was going to come up, so it's sitting right here by my feet. Um, Basically, all this thing is, I'll try and keep the cord out of the way. So, 
just mounted on the backside plate here is is basically just a, a grilling rotisserie motor. Um, I know Weber was selling them along with a lot of their charcoal grills. Um, it just usually has a big old plastic cover over the back and it has its own pigtail out the bottom of it. Um, other than that, it's just aluminum sheet metal panel. You can see how I just kind of marked out we're even missing a screw there because, you know, why not? But um, all I did was make a little adapter to uh, hit the shaft. I know the lighting isn't all that great. Let's see if I can pick up a little more light. Um, so I have, uh, this isn't my, my primary chuck, but I have one of the universal Novas so you can use these adapters uh, for whatever uh, size the, uh, the lathe spindle is. Um, so I basically just adapted this. I found a bolt that would fit. Um, Bored out the center of the bolt so to accept the shaft, and then just pinned it with a little cotter pin. You turn gobblers with free flowing rings. Is that from that? Goblets with, I honestly I have not done captured ring goblet. I thought that was part of it. Stuff sorry. before no, um, I am familiar with the technique. I just honestly haven't tried it. I don't have the the tooling. I don't know that I would need the tooling. Could probably pull it off with the stuff that I have, but I have not done captured ring anything. I'm not opposed to it. What's your favorite meal to have with me? Favorite meal? I like this question, Jess. It's like relationship time. I think my favorite meal is the the hams that I smoke on Friendsgiving. I'm going to give you that. Mm -hmm. What is it? Good. It. it was literally like arching your eyeball like this. Going for me? <coughs> Chicken! Hi, Chicken taters! Mark the gentleman says hello. What's going on, Mark? Oh, yeah, that friend's getting hammered. So, uh... Hi, David Ridley. Thank you for joining us. What's going on, man? Friendsgiving's going to have to be in the mountains this year. Coming to us from England? Jeez. Yeah. What time is it over there? Oh, you want a question? Bill Shaverbush had some great questions. That was actually who I brought up the rotisserie from. He also wanted to talk. So I'm going through puberty. Did you hear that? I also wanted to talk to you about um, time management with the baby. How are you doing your prep work and time management with having a baby? Grind hard. Uh, capitalize on naps. And that's a tough thing, too, because in some processes, it takes a good half an hour just to set up what it is that you're trying to do. And then when she starts tossing 10 minutes into the actual work, then you shut down the shop, go back and go back to your dad duties and then pray that the next nap, because we only get three max during the day. Um, just, you know, it's pretty much just capitalize on every minute that you get. Time management is uh, an interesting thing. And um, when working into the wee hours of the night, I find myself a lot of times burning sleep just to decompress and wind down and get tired because who's ready to just dump off to sleep after their work shift and start the whole process over again? Yeah, well, she does it. I pick sleep over everything anymore. He's like, you want to hang? I'm like, no, I love you. You want to cuddle in bed? No. See you tomorrow. Your mother does make the best chili. I'm glad you know that. Just now, now all you guys know, she makes the best. 
Um, we all have something we're good at. Um, all right, let's see here. We got a lot going on here. Someone actually asked about our names. So I think that's a good one. I'll tackle it so you can drink a beer for a second. So this is Todd, 37. So is that right? Yep. Yes. Okay. I lose track. I got it. Under I stopped control. counting a while ago. 37. So Todd, a lot of people ask just because all they see is Duca, but Todd, I'm Shannon. I'm 32. Right? Yeah. She says she's old. That makes me. We have Andre, Over. Mr. Chicken Tater himself. He is 13. Our youngest son, who made us the cup we were just looking at, Cedric. What are you drinking? Jack and Coke. Uh, um, Cedric is 11. And we have our youngest daughter, Aurora. She is eight months. And then we have our dog, Izzy, who is three years old. Also goes by other aliases such as White Weasel, uh, Fluff Nose, Dog Dog, Butthole. What else do we call her? Her name is Isis, but yeah, apparently a bunch of people got offended because they thought that maybe she was a jihadist. And I was just like, no, she's a dog, and I'm into ancient <laughs> civilizations. <laughs> and dog. Isis is uh, a an Egyptian goddess. Who to thunk it? I like that. The dog. Um, how long have you been woodworking? So that was again, I got him, I got you your lathe. It came with the lathe, the band saw. Yeah, where's Sparky at? I was hoping he would show up. And the table saw. There was a gentleman that I met on Facebook sales, Sparky Grace. I was just supposed to buy his first lathe from that gentleman. And he gave me a wicked table saw and a pretty good band yeah, we got saw. An, an old uh, Delta shop master, like old school uh, table saw with that. He threw in um, uh, drill press and saw that I happen to be working with and have modified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do a whole lot of the adapt and overcome stuff when it comes to the tooling that we have and just try and make it work. I actually added a five inch riser to that bandsaw and I use a Sterrett uh, custom blade just so we can get the height out of it because I don't have three grand spent on a, a big. It was a hell of a deal though. I think I got all that stuff 450, I think we were looking at. I had no idea what I was talking about when I went to this guy's shop. I didn't know shit about shit. And he's like talking to me about all this woodworking stuff. I said, is it shiny? I'll buy it. But he used to talk about wanting to do woodworking. You did that for a year, I would say, before I said, look, some guy's dropping this stuff off. So. Yeah, I played around. Um, I think the biggest thing. The hardest thing to learn when I was learning wood turning was the actual <laughs> order of right. operations and how to get things set up. Like whether you're going between centers to get it into the chuck and how to keep things balanced. Um, that was probably the biggest uh, learning curve. But I just went into the YouTube hole and developed stuff like that. Um, Ron's asking, did someone teach me uh, or did I learn on my own no um I, I pretty much just kind of went by the seat of my pants um with the first lathe I got we got one of those starter kits you know those chinesium ones they didn't even have gouges in them there were those big open fluted English old English style uh chisels and I was running that for a while and that's one of the biggest reasons that I run carbide now, because when I went to go shop for primary tools, stuff that, you know, I, I know that I'm going to be using, it was a pretty daunting thing looking at the wall and everything's like 130 bucks and up. And I was just like, well, I've done a lot of uh, metal machining. Um, I've done a lot of metal lathe work, and I know carbide is, uh, you know, cut some stuff. 
So um, I just picked up a, a set of carbide tools and I kind of went from there and uh, learned my own techniques and styles. Um, we have recently picked up a couple of uh, bowl gouges and I will be introducing them as I go and just kind of learning that at my own pace. It's totally a, a different technique and it's definitely something to learn, but I've been playing around with it and getting more comfortable with it. Obviously I don't want to be shooting videos and have gnarly catches and crap like that. I haven't yet, but it's, you know, I'll be slowly introducing the gouge work on bowls and stuff. Um, as we go, I'll be roughing in with that. Cause you guys were giving me a load of, well, not you guys, but some of them guys were giving me a load of crap using a rougher. Um, I personally don't care and I don't think that I would ever break a tang because I'm not doing heavy work with it and I modified the cutting edge to not It doesn't make it hard. any less appreciated that some people say things with good interest in mind. Wear safety equipment. We <coughs> don't want you to lose an eye. Actually, Hodge, uh, Shannon was talking about turning something this week, so we might actually get her on the lathe. Yeah, I want to make Jeanette something. From the Bahamas. I should have brought down some of the oh, stuff I made. Oh, man. I wish I could hang out with you. I mean, until the hurricanes come and all that crap. But, oof. Mom with the sword. Andre, don't forget, it's okay to challenge someone to a duel in Canada. Don't think I'm not looking up to your dad. Mark the Gentleman Woodturner, YouTube talk, still learning. Hey, listen, uh, brother. Andre, send some over, Stephen. I have 172 chisels and only pick up three. I'll say this to anyone that does any kind of craft. If you're not still learning, you, you've you given up. Because I don't think there really is such a thing as a master. And it, you're, you're always learning. You have to. You have to. You have to be learning or you just die. <laughs> What tool did you just hold? The T-Way tools bulk out with the extended handle. Those are new five eighths. I don't, I don't even know if you can see that. This is a D-Way gouge. I really like their handles. Uh, and I'm going to... Looks like a samurai sword. Pretty much moving forward, any of the traditional tooling I'm going to base off of this handle. Um, I got a couple ounces of lead shot in the back side over, just to add a little bit of weight. Um, I like and I appreciate the leverage that I can get with that because that thing is capable of doing some heavy cuts. What made you choose the D? Stupid friend. Basically the handle. And um they're great over there. Yeah. When I called to place that order, I talked with a woman. She had it out the door and to us in like two days, gave us five percent off. They were nice. Yeah, they were great. Um I've watched a lot of actual um instructional videos, like guys that tour. And uh, a lot of those guys are using D-Way stuff, and they speak highly of it. So that's kind of why we're starting to look in that direction when it came time to uh, pick up a gouge. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, I got a, a cue from Easy Wood Tools to uh, hit them back towards the end of the year. But when we talked to them uh, earlier, we were probably a little too small. They didn't really want to talk to me. Still use their stuff, and I still promote their stuff in almost all the videos that I do, especially uh, when we're doing resin uh, work. I'm always using the Negative Rake Easy Wood Tools Carbide because I've had a lot of chip out using traditional tooling and even uh, just the, the flat carbide. Um, that stuff likes to dig into resin and kick out big old chunks. Are you going to turn something tonight? We're working on this little guy behind us, but uh, I think we're going to actually, once we leave here, I'll probably go check out uh, Brad's live stream. <laughs> Maybe Aurora wine glasses on your right side. Yes. 
Yes. It is still over there. Yeah, it's still over there. I got to get um, some cold jaws set up to finish up the bottom of that piece before I can do anything uh, further with it. So now it just kind of sits there and it looks at me and I look at it and it cries every once in a while because I haven't paid it much attention. But I paid attention. All right. Would you guys like for him to do lives where he turns stuff? Because we could make that happen if that's a thing. Yeah, now that I, now that we know how to do this, because I, I, honestly, I'm surprised that this went off so well. I was imagining that we might have some problems uh, in getting it going, but this seems pretty uh, streamlined. I guess we'll start trying to figure out how to do that because people would like to see it. We could definitely do that. At this point, at least we've gotten some of your frequently asked questions out. People are asking what music you use, though. What's that website that you got the account on? Do you remember? Um, for, well, first, Nicholas is asking what uh, camera we use. And I use uh, GoPro. Seven? I or think. eight. This is a GoPro uh, Hero 7 Black. And if you go the way of the GoPro, I highly suggest you go with the black model because it's the only camera of their series that allows for a uh, straight line frame of reference uh, as far as how the lens operates. The, the white and the silver, they only work in a fisheye. And unless you have conversion technology and your editing software, you're going to have some problems with that. Um, as far as the music stuff, we use Epidemic Sound. It's a subscription service. I think it's like 15 bucks a month. But it's unlimited. Uh, where do we get the branding iron? We covered this a little earlier, but... Um, uh, brandingirons.com they're the ones that made the branding iron and yeah i i actually bought a silver uh, at first thinking that that would be all right because we've been working on a budget ever since we realized that we were going to have to live off the of savings for however month however many months i wasn't allowed to work <laughs> but um i actually ended up having to return that because i i didn't realize until after i had bought it that it would not do uh the straight perspective. <clears throat> yeah. I started looking on Meraki. It's an app on my phone for like used sales. I'm going to try and get him another GoPro black at some point, just so you guys have more angles to see things at. I know some of the videos people were mentioning, they didn't like so much that maybe the resin shavings were, you know, covering the screen. But when you only have one camera, you have one option for what you're, yeah, that's a tough off, that's though. a tough balance between concentrating on cutting the piece and blowing the resin off of the lens as it's clinging. The <laughs> video I saw of yours, the music was an acoustic guitar instrumental. I listened to it 30 times with Shazam. Richard, send us the video that you watched with that. Did I say that right? Yeah. Let us know the name of that video. And then we can try and track down which song that was for you. Because I get it. Some of those we really like. That one we listen to up here in the house all the time. Yeah, one the, the one song is like my daughter's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try webcams are recording through OBS. We just really don't have any other camera options right now. Right now we're actually on my work laptop. Um, so that's not really something that I'm going to be able to bring down here for making a mess. What should I not say that? Um, there, is a, work. there is a way to, uh, stream through the GoPro. I haven't tested it yet and I wasn't about to do a test. Um, she uses this for work for, uh, live meetings and stuff. So I knew that this was going to work. Um, I can actually stream through the GoPro to my iPad and out. So that might be an option. Um, I might actually just run a cable down from the PC and just do a uh, HDMI hookup on the GoPro. That might work. But 
Yeah, moving forward, I, I wouldn't mind doing um, like a weekly something. Just work and chat, chill kind of thing, you know. Ah, Rev Sean. Hi. Thank you for all of your kind comments on his videos. All of you guys actually, just going to say that real quick. I love, I look at his comments all the time and I, it's just so uplifting to see. Oh yeah. 98% oh, yeah. of you say so many nice things and it's been a hell of a struggle. I would say for our family to get here. It's gone. Okay. We're getting there. It's getting better each day as we get in a group, but it wasn't easy. And there were times where the nice things some of you have said were the difference between. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Yeah, yeah, and that's one thing I'm trying to stay away from. I I really just want to keep this my passion and not let it turn into a grind and just something that I have to force out. So, like especially with the project you see behind me, um, I've been taking it a lot easier on this one, and I think that it it's developing a lot better because I'm not trying to force it out. And it's pretty though, you should put the rubbing alcohol on and let them get it. It's so pretty. You can barely see it from there, but the color is so pretty. Ron, I would love to get into 100K subs. <laughs> <laughs> the day will come. You'll get there. You're good at what you do, and you're a good man. So it'll work out. We do sell some of the stuff that we make. Um, a lot of the stuff that I choose to make pieces out of is uh, very heavily figured. So I like to sit on that stuff for a couple of weeks before I get it up on the storage to make sure that it's not unwinding too bad. Or if it does happen to uh, warp a little bit and unwind, I want to make sure that it still kind of works with the, the, the piece itself. And, you know, just kind of like the, the way the grain is uh, looking and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just want to make sure that nothing ever gets sent out that is going to be a problem in the future because it's literally the last thing we need. Uh, <laughs> we got enough problems to we deal actually, with on a daily basis. The ugly stick vase went out and something took place, we believe, in transit. The woman who purchased it from us was beyond kind and understanding. She sent it back to us. We fixed it back up. You would never even know anything had happened to it and sent it back out. But she was wonderful. She's been an amazing follower as well. But it came back home <laughs> after it left. And I was so happy to see it back here. Then I had to part with it a whole nother time. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Just another thing to, to add. <laughs> um. I think beyond the first three videos that I ever made, it, it basically turned into a, a tradition, a terrible one, albeit. But I have not shot a closing to a video that wasn't literally real time before the video got uploaded. So oh, yeah. pretty much every single video that I've ever done past the Bobby first two Duke or three. Is here. Get out of Stop, here. Stop, I'm sweating. <gasps> it's my hall pass. I gotta go. What here. going on, man? Talk about an inspiration. Showing up in the live stream, Bobby. Love your stuff. You are an inspiring. You're an inspiring guy. Uh, it's pretty incredible that you showed up. Um, I, sorry. I just want to finish this thought. Um. So, yeah, most of the time when when I'm shooting closings, it's right around 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, and I shoot that and I add it. I've got all the editing work done, and I know all I have to do is just let the, the, the music kind of just keep rolling, and then I can just clip it out. But, yeah, most of the time I'm just dying to sleep. So I'm trying to avoid that as well. So I want to be able to – invest the appropriate amount of time <laughs> into the pieces without killing myself but holy crap bobby duke is I in our breathe. live stream chat i'm dying andre goes it's bobby duke oh my god mom's shocked <laughs> like i don't even know what we're doing anymore 
Bobby Duke, you are my hall pass in our household. Love your wife to death also. So, I mean, don't get me wrong here, but. You're like the only man crush that I allow. I just hope you know that. Oh, I'm wrecked. I'm sweating. <laughs> oh. So, uh, you guys got any other questions, comments, ideas? I'm totally open to ideas. Um, what's going on, Nicole? <laughs> we we love your stuff. We we watch everything you do. Um, you're you're absolutely inspiring. You're you're totally one of the people that made me feel like I might be able to make this thing work. Um, and then Nicole picking up with the clay throwing added to all of that, where it was like, holy shit, you know, starting, anybody can build off of their talent and passion. Starting this channel was. Uh, survival and now it's just now i can actually follow down a passion and uh be an example to my children and my daughter's going to be able to see all of these videos when she gets older and see herself as this tiny little nugget hanging out in the shop just looking at our stuff yeah yeah yep. if you don't know who bobby duke is you need to check out his channel he is not only an amazing person um, he is an amazing creator. Uh, some of the carving stuff that he has done, I, I, pretty much everything that he does is 11 out of 10. Yeah, go check out his channel. His work is incredible. And not only that, he's, he, he's, just, he's just a great guy, and he likes to have fun, and he's a goofball like me and like my wife here. So it's just insane. We, we relate to you so much, Bobby. You're... Do you do any things other than turning, other than making wood, metal? Um, before I started doing wood turning, my hobby was building race cars and off-road vehicles, metal fabrication. Um, yeah, that, that's what I did. I was building a race car. Uh, and it seems that that race car is probably going to be getting parted out to pick up a new lathe. <laughs> but that's probably what's going to be happening here in the, in the future. Um, I had a lot of money invested in that, that just is sitting around and, um, probably going to be a better idea to, uh, unearth some of that and put it into something that's usable. So... I, I'm dying. Hey, what's going on, Frank? We're going to negative rates inside these full gals. Um, someone asked again about the slow turning wheel. Um, James, that's actually earlier on in the chat if you want to get back to it, only because it was such a long explanation. He shows it and everything. So if you pop back afterwards, you'll be able to catch all that. And I am considering, like I said uh, before, um, I have all the uh, the part numbers and contacts. And if you guys are actually interested in uh, just something that's pre-made, if you wanted to pick it up uh, as a product, I will definitely get some of those in the works. Um, and I, I don't have a problem uh, giving you the part numbers. Uh, I can give you the part number for the motor. But the rest is going to be fabrication on, on your end. You're going to have to find a way to adapt it to your chalk and, and uh, you know, kind of go from there. But um, if I see enough interest, uh, I will definitely uh, put that into motion and we'll get some of those made up for you guys. And you guys can start playing around with some of the resin finish uh, stuff. Um, I do want to preface this by saying I know the way that it's kind of presented in the videos, it kind of looks pretty easy and it's just like throw a code on it and it's beautiful. Um, it really doesn't work like that. Uh, I, I generally put three coats. I go through it. I go through that process three times. Um, so we'll coat it and then I'll level it with, you know, sand it back down. We'll level it all back out, get another coat on it, re-level it and generally by the third uh coat you have a nice glass like finish but um 
you know, there's you, you're when the resin is actually sinking into the grain of the wood, you're trading the resin for air. So you're going to get bubbles. Um, you got to keep it nice and hot. Make sure that it uh, self levels, basically. What type of racing, babe? Drag racing. You have to show he. When I first met him, one of the most attractive things that always was, still is, and will always be about him is just watching his hands. I remember the first time I said that to him, and he's looking at me like, "What's wrong with you?" But I have so many pictures and images of his hands. Frank um, wants a baby shot. Oh well, she's crashed. <laughs> There's your baby shot, Frank. She's actually been uh, very uh, not. I don't want what's the word? Not compliant, but she's uh, she's been helping us out here by not stirring and, and and getting up while we're trying to get this done with you guys. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I was into drag racing. I would do uh, engine building. I've done uh, cylinder head porting. Um, Engine specking, like matching uh, cylinder bores to stroke to uh, cam lift, valve size, all that stuff. I was really into uh, the automotive stuff. And then they turned the drag strip that was holding the events that I uh, was trying to participate in into a parking lot. Boing. So that happened. And then they moved the events like three hours out further um and to participate in those kind of events you have to be present every other weekend for the entirety of the weekend just to accumulate points throughout the season and it just turned into something that probably wasn't possible anymore so i just kind of stopped on the whole thing and started building a jeep put a long arm kit on a jeep so we can throw some 35s underneath an XJ and crawl over some rocks and do some mud stuff. This has been, honest to God. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, we amazing. need to do this more often. This yeah. has been great. Circle track. All right, cool. Yeah, I can definitely get into that. It's the same kind of, uh, the same kind of work, and you're just doing something different, a little bit different. <clears throat> we'll set up another one of these woodsmith i love that yes i'm thinking maybe like these chit chats you know less frequently do i have a booger or something what happened do i have a booger no you're looking like i have a booger was it a booger i don't know it might have been a booger <laughs> well <laughs> so <clears throat> We're gonna do some more of these. This I think went really well. It's been really nice. I think just getting to know everybody. Oh, for sure. No, this has been great. You guys um, are fucking awesome. I was pretty nervous doing this for the first time ever, but I think we did pretty good. Um, I know I ramble pretty easily. I think that's why he had me come down here. <laughs> so that I could interject. You're part of the team. You keep me on point. You're the the yin to my yan, or vice versa. I don't know. I hear you, baby. Um, but yeah, now that we know you guys would like to see some live turns too, I think we'll have to try and incorporate a couple of those into the mix of things. Especially now that you're not going to be losing your mind trying to meet Friday. You can. Well, it started out as Thursday, Thursday. morning, yeah. and then it turned into. Thursday afternoon, and then it turned into Friday 1 a.m., and then, yeah, I just kept going down the line. So, like, every week I was losing six hours, and um, I'm just going to try to avoid doing the uh, the rat race thing and just keep this uh, something that I love to do and maintain myself and my mental stability while doing it. <laughs> For sure. But I think this went well. Thank you all for hanging out with us. There have been some really awesome people that have popped in just talking with us, saying hi. I'm personally really happy that 
we got to hang out a little bit with the boys, even yeah, as this. So Andre and Cedric, just as a reminder, we love you so much and miss you. And we love that you can be here with us in your own way when you join us in the shop for our videos. Um, oh, oh, I heard Jack Daniels preserve. A man after my own heart. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is awesome. We'll have to try it again. If you have other questions, if you have other things that you want to talk about, shoot us emails, Instagram messages, Facebook messages, whatever. We catch them. I make notes of everything. We don't always get back to you. We're not ignoring you. It's just, this turned into a lot more than we thought it would be. Yeah, we're just, you know, doing the best we can with what we got to work with and um, just trying to stay above water and just make the best life that we can for our daughter and our boys and not lose our minds while doing it. And, you know, everybody wants to smile and we're just trying to find a way to do it amongst all this chaos and crap that's out there in the world just to make our own little bubble. So let's do that as a community. I, I love you guys so much. I appreciate the support. Um, I thank every single one of you for showing up just to come and hang out with us. Uh, yeah. I honestly, I can't wait to do this again. Um, I don't know how I would be able to do like live turning and stuff and still talk to you guys. I might be, I don't know, um, set up a monitor or something and I can just kind of chat and ramble that. That would actually be really cool. Cause once it gets late, it's, it's tough to stay. <laughs> to stay on target and you know it'd be cool to have somebody to talk to so i think this is the part where we say love you guys i love you guys and i'll see you we're gonna see you when we see you when i get the next video out <laughs> but you can see that that's what you're gonna be seeing right there that's a little something i'm working on right now so i hope you guys love that um thank you guys so much for coming out Nothing but love. See ya.